Hey man, are you still setting up your time-based effects all wrong in Logic Pro X? It's cool. We're going to get them reverbs, delays, choruses, flanges all together. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. And today's video is actually going to be about how you can easily set up time-based effects. I should not say easily, but properly set up time-based effects in your Logic Pro X session. Now, what are time-based effects? Time-based effects are any effects that deal with time, like reverb or delay or chorus effects, doublers. All those could be considered time-based effects. Unique thing about time-based effects that's different from, let's say, dynamic or game-based effects is that with a dynamic or game-based effect, we typically want those processors to be inserted directly in the path of the signal as to take over and control and process that entire signal. With time-based effects like a reverb or a delay, we don't really want to have that sound take over our original signal, but we rather we want to add a tasteful amount of that. So, hey man, let me be your guide to getting Pro Tools certified. Whether you're brand new to Pro Tools or if you've been using the software for years, this course will get you the skills you need to demonstrate a fundamental competency in mixing and editing in Pro Tools. Having a Pro Tools certification provides real life tangible benefits and allows you to stand out on your resume and from your peers in the industry. Registration is open now and space is very limited. So don't wait, let's get certified. For today's example, I'm gonna be using a reverb. So that's, you know, the big hall room effect that we wanna all have on our vocals. So the first thing I wanna do here in Logic Pro X is actually switch over to the mixer view. It's gonna be a whole lot easier to work with and see, okay? So we got my lead vocal track here. I'm gonna play a bit of it so we can just hear how it sounds dry. Everybody wanna feel this type of love. All right, no effects on there at all. And you know, if I was going to apply like an EQ or an a uh, compressor, anything like that, then I would go right up to this audio effects section and add one of those directly into the signal path. Like if I wanted to compress this. Everybody wanna feel this type of love. Everybody wanna feel this type of love. All right, and then I would just add that compressor because the compressor is a component that I actually want to control the entire signal. Now. For a reverb though, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna come down from the audio effects and we're actually gonna go to the send. Now a send is gonna allow us to basically split off a piece of this signal. Basically we're creating a clone and we're gonna send part of this signal somewhere else so it can be processed and then we can blend that processed signal back in. And in this case, it's gonna be processed with a reverb effect. So I'm gonna click right on the send selector. I'm gonna go down to bus. Now I can choose any bus. If you notice, I actually have already labeled some of my inputs and outputs though. So I'm just gonna choose bus four because that one has already been labeled. If you need to label your inputs and outputs, you can do this too, just by going up to the mix window, to the mix menu, choosing IO labels. You come over, you find, you scroll down to your buses, you find the buses that you wanna use. You see, here we go. And then you can change the names of them right over here and that makes it super easy to stay organized. So my first bus that I'm using, my well, my bus four, I've renamed it Reverb, and you see now I'm sending out to the Reverb, which is coming as the input to this aux input track. So let's just go ahead, double click to name this, and we'll name that Reverb as well. So the next thing that we need to do is actually apply the Reverb effect on this new reverb aux channel that was just created for us. So I'm gonna go right to the audio effects section here. I'm gonna go down to reverb, choose any reverb. We'll just choose this mono stereo reverb because I love a stereo reverb. We're not gonna worry about the uh, parameters inside that reverb for now. What we need to do though, the next step is going to be to actually turn up our reverb sin level, right? So this sin level, this little a uh, knob here, this little pot, determines how much of this original vocal are we sending over to be processed by the reverb, which will in turn tell us how much reverb we're adding to our signal. So let's hear it. Everybody wanna feel this type of love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we built this type of love from the ground up. And the beauty of actually adding um, the effect 
on its own channel is that now I can put an effect on my effect. So if you notice, I just br brought that reverb down. So if I wanted to maybe EQ that reverb, I can do that. I can actually go and grab an EQ and do something like, you know, roll off the low frequencies and roll off the high frequencies, which is something that I definitely um, recommend that you all do for a more professional sounding reverb. Everybody want to feel this type of love. <laughs> But we built this type of love from the ground up. And that is how you apply reverb and other time-based effects in Logic Pro X. This same technique can be used for delays, flangers, chorages, anything that you really want, all right? Any type of parallel processing that you want to add to your session. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. Hope you found this to be extremely helpful. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and for the full song, this legendary love song by my boo, Lydia Caesar, I'll leave a link in the description. Make sure y'all check that out, all right? Be dope.